Well, today I've got to take a little break from the skiff build and I've got to work on a family member's tractor and it's a Ford 600. And the issue is what's happening is the fuel cutoff under the tank is leaking like a sieve. And the only way you can get to these things is to rip the tank completely off. So I got it off and I got to looking at it. I think I might can improve it, maybe, we'll see. I think it's gonna be a good idea. I think it'll work good, but I haven't tried it yet. Well, this old 600 has had this issue happen multiple times over the last 10 years. And it's just such a pain to get the hood and everything off. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's a little time consuming. And it just seems to me like this solution could really be a good one. So I'm hoping that it works out and we'll see what it is. So this is a cutoff for a 600 or 800. And I know it differs between the year models, but this is the main one that I've seen. And the way this thing works, I went ahead, there is like a rivet that goes right here that keeps this from backing all the way out. And the problem on these 600s and is that you've really got about that much room between the valve cover and this under the tank. So you can imagine, I'll try to get a picture of it later, but you can imagine you've got that much room. So you can't get this thing off it's pretty much impossible to get off without pulling the whole gas tank off. So what I wanna to try to do is put a bolt in here, thread this and put a bolt with a stop washer. So whenever this O-ring in here goes out, all I have to do is take that bolt out and unscrew this and replace that O-ring. And I've obviously, this is a newer O-ring I've put on. And you know, this is a, been a reoccurring problem on this tractor and it's something i want to try to get fixed where you know it's it's serviceable and not tear half the tractor apart the hood the gas tank everything off to fix the five cent o-ring so what i've got is i've got this pulled out and i went ahead and drilled this rivet out i don't remember unfortunately the size i just grabbed a drill bit that looked right and drilled it out which I hadn't planned all this out and hadn't really thought it through. So I think going through, I went to the hardware store the other day, I forgot this piece and I just grabbed some random bolts. These are, I think M4s, M5s and M6s. The M6 I think is gonna be a little bit big. It's almost the size of a quarter 20, but I think an M5 is gonna work just about perfect. So I've got my tap, I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get this thing tapped out. So I'm just gonna use, I'm tapping aluminum so it's not like, it's gonna heat up too bad. So I'm just gonna turn in a little bit and back out, in a little bit, back it out. It's like you would tap anything else, but I've gotta make sure I don't go too deep and go through and hit the other side and bottom it out. And then I'm gonna have issues I'll pull all the threads right out. So I think I can get it in focus. I think we're just about there. All right, so I got this thing threaded and I took some carburetor cleaner and a little wire brush here, or a little brass brush, and cleaned it up a little bit. Got all the any metal shavings out of there that I could. And now is where it's gonna get a little bit interesting because I got a short little bolt and the issue's gonna be, I've gotta get the right length on it so it stops this without hitting it. Because if it hits it, it's not gonna turn. So what I'm gonna probably end up having to do is take it down a little bit with a sander or a file, probably a sander, file would just take forever. And then I'm gonna have to re-thread it with a die to make sure my threads don't mess up because going into aluminum, if I get them messed up, it's just gonna strip them right out. All right, so I just took my little belt sander and I was holding with my fingers and that was a bad idea. So just took a little bit off, I rounded the end just a touch. So now all I'm gonna do is take the tap, hold it, because it's still kind of hot. 
take the tap and just try to restart the threads, get them going right. Which was, I think it was an M518, I found it. Oh, sorry, M5.08. So that's the bolt I'm using. And so I think we're good. Everything seems to be good. It's not binding and the nut is stopping it. And I thought about not even taking it or not even putting this in there and just leaving it where, you know, you turn it half a turn and you're good. But, you know, it going through bush hogging and working with tractor, there's a lot of vibration. So I wanted something there to stop it. But my concern now is, if you can see the uh, little star lock nut I got to go with this thing, because it's rounded and not sitting on a flat surface, it's literally pretty much doing nothing. So I'm gonna try to use another one that I got. All right, so I'm going through and trying, the O-ring was completely off of this. It was just in pieces. So I've got a kit of O-rings that I use an absolute ton. If you don't have one of these kits, I think I got these off Amazon for maybe, I don't remember, a long time ago, 30 bucks, 20 bucks. But for the uh, fuel cutoff valve itself, the R3 was the one that seemed to fit best, which is a metric, which is surprising. But the R3 in this one was too small and the R2 was way too small. So it seemed to be a metric size that fit the best, the R3. So there's also another O-ring that seals it to the tank. And I've went through all of them and that's the one that seems to fit best, but it's a little touch thicker than the one that was on it. But the only one, the only one that fit right and seemed to be the best size was an R12 out of the standard kit, which was 115, 11 16 7 8 3 30 seconds. So, if you need that information. And it is, it's a touch thicker. So, but that'll probably, it's not quite all the way down in there on this side. But I think that might, I think it worked just fine. I think it might work a little bit better because this one was a touch thinner. So, but we'll see. I'm gonna try it out once I get it put on and make sure everything works good. But what I'm gonna probably do is take some type of gasket maker and I'm gonna coat the crap out of this O-ring because I don't ever wanna take this off again. And that was getting the hood and the gas tank and all off was, I think it was about a three hour process. So, and that was for me. I'm sure other people could do it much quicker. But I'm also gonna take a little bit of thread locker and put on this as well before I you know, go ahead and final install it. I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing together. I put just a little bit of WD-40 on there just to make sure that nothing you know, tears it on the way in. It's pretty good and tight, so hopefully I'll we'll have no issues out of it. And now I'm gonna get, I gotta hunt it down. I can't find my thread locker, but I'm gonna take my thread locker. I am gonna put a little bit on there just to make sure that this thing doesn't back out because I honestly, these little lock washers, I don't, I don't 100% trust them. All right, I finally hunted it down. And now I've got a little bit on there and this may not be necessary, but it's gonna make me feel a little bit better. I'm using the blue. I think the blue is, let's see. Yeah, it's the removable. I can, I can never keep the blue and the red straight. I think the red's more of a permanent, maybe, I don't know. I can't ever remember, but that will keep this thing locked in place and I'll snug it up just a touch more, but I don't want to get it too tight because we are going into aluminum. So hopefully uh, this thing will be fixed and actually serviceable now. All right, well, she's ready to go and I don't have time right now to go get this put back on, but I will at a later date and I will put an update on. I'm just gonna make a quick little video on what I'm doing with this. And I've never tried this, a full disclosure, never tried it, don't know if it's gonna work, but I thought it was a good idea to have this where you can actually remove the cutoff and replace the O-rings, cause it's like a five cent O-ring. And to go through as much trouble as it was to get this thing off and not be able to, you know, just take a little nut out and put a five cent o-ring in just seemed crazy to me 
So hopefully this works good. I don't know if it will, but we'll try it out and see. This is just something I love to do. I love trying to tear stuff apart and make it better. And it may not actually make it better, but to me, I'm getting somewhere. And I went ahead, whenever I put it on, and put a bunch of gasket maker around the O-ring that seals to the tank. And, you know, that way, hopefully that will never leak right there. And, I mean, that was has never been the issue over the years. And with the sealer, it should last for a really long time. So hopefully that will last for at least four or five O-rings, which should be maybe 20 years. So leave me a comment and let me know what you think. Let me know if you think it's a good idea, a bad idea. And you know, I always like hearing people's feedback. It's kind of interesting. And it's cool to kind of see other people that have had the same issues and kind of resolve them in similar ways. Or So I'm a little, still a little undecided on which way I want to keep things going. And I know in the beginning, a lot of people subscribe because of tractors and what I do with tractors a lot. So I'm going to try to mix it up for now, kind of keep everything going, get people's feedback. If you subscribe for boats, subscribe for tractors, let me know. Let me know which way you think it should go. So hope you like the videos and hope you'll subscribe. And there'll be more skiff builds coming. And I'm just trying to put the nail down and get to editing. And editing is something that I've come to love and hate. So I'm going to try to keep pumping out videos and I appreciate everybody who subscribed. We're over a thousand now. And I never thought we'd get there. So appreciate everybody watching and we'll see you next time.